mostly familiar faces, so I would all say some things anyway. My name is Sarah Danziger, and thank you, Francis. And um, you're here for our Meet the Artist series, which we do every normally Thursday. Today is Wednesday, so I appreciate everyone switching up their schedules um, to join us here. Um, you see that our show has changed. I'm very excited. We'll be having an opening this Saturday. Uh, the photographs are by uh, photographer Jean Downer, and it, the show is curated by local historian Stephen Blauweiss. And he'll actually be doing a talk on another wild card day, which will be Saturday, uh, November 4th. So if you're interested in hearing about these photographs, about uh, why a lot of these buildings were demolished um, back in the 60s, 70s, um, that would be a really great conversation. So, and if. Another thing is we uh, are joined by our artists in residence right now. Uh, they are our final residents for 2023. Um, again, if you don't know about our residency program, it is uh, a one month program. We invite 10 artists, two at a time over the course of Ju June through November. They were chosen from a pool of about 130 artists. So we're really, really excited and lucky to be having them join us. Um, tonight we have Kiara Maya Gopi and Sean D. Henry Smith. Uh, we're gonna start with Sean and um, I will read a little bit of information. Sean D. Henry Smith is a collaborative practitioner engaging black experimentalisms in and across poetry, photography, sound and performance. Recent solo exhibitions include Tremor Low at Rosenstrat in Amsterdam and In Awe of Geometry and Mornings at White Columns in New York. Their book, Wild Peach, was published by Future Poem and shortlisted for the Penn Open Book Award. And they are the author of two chapbooks, Body Texts and Flotsam Sweet, A Strange and Precarious Life, or How We Chronicled the Little Disasters and I Won't Leave the Dance Floor Till It's Out of My System. They have received awards and fellowships from Amsterdam Fonds, Voor de Kunst, the Fulbright Program, the Poetry Project, and Poets House, among others. They have read and performed pre previously at 47 Canal, Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum, The Shed, the Studio Museum in Harlem, Brooklyn Museum, the Poetry Project, and Triple Canopy, among others. Henry Smith regularly collaborates in sound, poetry, and performance with Dweller, Electronics, Amani Elizabeth Jackson as Mouthfeel, Justin Allen, Taza Cheek, Yulan Grant, Ryan C. Clark, Dan Danny Sadiel Pina, Gabrielle Octavia Rucker, Alec Mateo, and Derricka Shields, among others. Can we please give a round of applause for Sean D. Henry Smith? Thank you. Um, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to go through some slides. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a photo of me as a newborn. I believe it's the day of my christening, held on the shoulder of a man in a dark suit. The corner of the glossy drugstore print, Eckerd's maybe, where his face should be is missing, torn out, jagged. When we fight, she say with fever. But I am not interested in my forced biographies. A missing father is a story told, old as Odysseus, older. It is not my interest to narrativize pain. Narrative is not my interest, nor pain. It's more like gesture, the tear on the print, held on the shoulder, the fight on my face. A history unspeakable lives in the skin and further in the soil. Um, thanks for the first part of this. I'm gonna talk about some pictures that have, and practices that have informed my own. Um, I can still, recall encountering Laura Simpson's gestures and reenactments for the first time. I, 
much like this in, in a slide, but then later on in, in an exhibition context. But I think it was um, the first time I'd really encountered a photograph not having to be about what it was about. <laughs> um, and I mean like, um, you know, uh, my relationship to photographs had been largely the family album, um, uh, whatever, advertising, the, the way that any of us encounter pictures in our day to day. Um, but it was really this work in the series that helped me like open up like what I'd already been interested in in terms of language and obscurity and um, and where that interacts with a photograph. Um, it, it, there's also something incredibly cinematic about this work to me in which I feel like my brain wants to fill in all the moments in between the frames offered. Um, and sometimes it does. And I feel like I come to photography in pursuit of cinema and uh, rest in my obsession with the still, um, with the meditative. Um, um, but yeah, I, I am also still very interested in when a picture is exactly what it's about. And and what that also opens up, um, um, you know, photographs of artists and musicians, and you know, the my wall still now and then before uh, plastered in magazine covers and tear outs and so on, and um, feeling like somehow by looking into someone's gaze, I might understand a song better or um, a poem or whatever else. And also realizing in my own practice that making photographs of people allowed me to kind of be in a, a dialogue with them, you know, and, and, you know, across the archive is a kind of citation uh, it's like, I'm, I'm thinking with you as I'm looking at you. Um, your ideas live with the work that I make. Your sound lives with the work that I make. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's a part of the dialogue. This, this trio is really uh, a quad. You know, like there's, there's, you know, Lyle Ashton Harris is here in the circle in this moment of imbibing um, and, and thus a part of the dialogue. And, and those are the, yeah, I, all, all of this was just informing and still informs how I like want to be um, in making photographs. Um, and also, um, you know, and, 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 you know, between these three artists, there's, um, a very direct relationship to performance, um, but recognizing that you know the, the role of photographer is itself a performance, um, and you know I, I feel like I'm teasing out what that is and what that means to me. Um, and. Yeah, again, just this relationship to like text that wasn't exactly captioning, um, but also offered insight. Um, and in that togethering and also in that uh, distortion, there's such potential opened up into reading. Um, and that looking at a photograph is reading and looking at a text is reading and that, that doesn't have to be a narrative or linear experience. Um, and yeah, it's the ineffable that I'm loyal to. Um,
you know, the, the, when I um, think about the the dim and blur of Dikarama pictures and, and also where I find myself making pictures in dark and energetic spaces, um, you know, the, the sort of, I, I, I think I've come to recognize that the blur is parallel. Like it's, it's almost like you can't stop the energy within yourself. And so even as you're trying to still your body to make for a certain kind of frame, it's in fact like the sort of metronomic that creates a harmony. Um, yeah, there's, there's, it's like the, yeah, that's, um, I think the <laughs> being in the the experience is oftentimes like more important to me than the result itself. I spend so much time walking with the camera and not making pictures. Um, but I like the walk wouldn't have been complete if I was without the camera, you know, and so it's um and you know, William Greaves and Symbiopsychotaxoplasm, I, this work also informs all the ways that I'm thinking and has for so long. And, and I think at the moment where I'm at with it is kind of like the, it's funny as I'm about to say this, I recognize that I, I didn't put any self-portraits in the selection of photographs I'll show you, but, um, his stakes are just as high as everyone else that he's invited into this experiment. Um, and by being the character of director, um, but allowing himself to be looked at while looking is kind of a vulnerable position. Um, and it, I think, goes against what we might think of as someone calling the shots and like, making a thing happen, but it's like, oh, there's still a way to, you know, honor the improvisational and, and um, yeah, and again, like, make room to fail within an idea um, and within the experiment. And that's, you know, having a practice that feels improvisational truly at every level, um, is this like, I don't know, maybe it's an addiction to gambling. I do like to throw dice, but I, um, it's, it's this opening up to chance and being like um, subject to the wind. I'm gonna read an excerpt from Ariel Goldberg's The Photographer Without a Camera. The photographer surrounded by natural and man-made beauty offers their access to the live event. They are in the middle of nowhere, my nowhere. Someone else is somewhere, wind blows. Camera recorded the time taken as something after 5 p.m., tired shoulders. I'm told to shoot here, but I think this picture is kind of boring. It's more of routine, less of surprise, not much action besides waiting for transportation. So I'm limited to prescribed activities. Is this a drill or is this real? To say that to me ruins the fun. Um, this one's out of order, <laughs> but it's, this is a still from um, Colleen Smith's The Changing Thing, um, which is also a film that um, I am deeply moved by and informed by. Um, you know, I, I, I really, perhaps as you can tell, I'm, I'm, I'm all right at exits, but I'm, I'm, I don't feel good at entrances um, or to feel that I am good at entrances. Um, and, you know, this film, I feel like you plop into it already, like the, the, the activity is already happening. Um, even before the credits, you're already in the sound and the dialogue. And so, it's, you know, that that's, that like formation is important to me. Um, I, I um, 
Yeah, it's kind of why talks feel different than readings. I typically just end up start reading, you know, and then and then we can fill in the blanks later. But it's like the thing, the ideas are already happening. Um, um, it's ceremony, something else. I don't know. And so I'm going to show some pictures, and some of them I'll have more to say about than others. Um, this ensuing experiment of sight, looking drum in hand, what I'm looking through, then what I'm looking at. The landscape sets the rhythm for this improvisation, this landscape I perform on, perform a photographer. The primary instrument of experience is the body, Akila Oliver, who we saw earlier. In her book, The She Said Dialogues, Flesh Memory, defines the postmodern poetry and performance art, sorry, provides the postmodern poetry and performance art definition of flesh memory as one, a text, a language, a mythology, a truth, a reality, an invented well as literal translation of everything that we've ever experienced or known, whether we know it directly or through some type of genetic memory, osmosis, or environment. Two, the body's truths and realities. Three, the multiplicity of languages and realities that the flesh holds. Four, the language activated in the body's memory. In a definition, she provides a way to live, a way to talk, I live, and with those I'm living, I make dialogue. Embodiment does not belong to human experience alone. I approach the world, its winds, its waters, all else as a poet, which means I locate myself in my body, inseparable from the world, the water. I begin my study in knowing I can only know what allows itself, in exactly the ways knowledge is made available. Patience. I must remain porous. My head was full of sound, all the ocean screaming voices reaching to blanket, swathe. I remember a vengeful sea. I could have walked on the water, this time crossed over for curiosity this time self-designated. So again, I tell you my name. What brought me here was the wind. In the rogue cacophony and mathematics of rhythm and secret, as informed by the land, as informed by the water, I write and I photograph. Black secrecy, that which camouflages from the uninvited, ever evolving and wholly embodied languages, adapting our conditions and technology to communicate together for love and survival. Like, you can't know me unless you're supposed to know. In his hands, he washes his face into waking. In the bathroom's amber light, humming of eucalyptus. Swathe, water clings to the skin of his face, skin of his hands, and the water skin drips, pours. A, a, a different screaming, fauceted, he controls it. Slow typhoon. Often the Dutch colonial role is obscured, but it is through its technology that its horror lies. They built the boats. The first slave ships employed by the British were Dutch merchant ships. On night water, the ship stands, its country's flag blurring in the wind. The title of this photograph calls to Zong, an old Dutch word for care, as well as M. Nerbesse Phillips' book of the same title. The Zong massacre, lost and unable to complete their voyage to the Caribbean, which enslavers sailing the Dutch merchant ship of the same name sold to the British threw more than 130 enslaved Africans overboard after they were starved and fell ill.
And still my head was full of sound, and still the ocean screaming voices reaching to blanket. Swathe, who stands before me? Why this urgent interruption, this begging to be seen? Through duplicitous intervention, I came to realize I was experiencing the world firsthand and at once intimately over someone else's shoulder. An embrace, opening my, my eyes as I look over someone else's shoulder, overlooking the time I stand in, I cannot but wonder who crossed the water to greet me. In an undefinable now, a few steps into yesterday, an apparition, an etching into soil, Ringing of goosenecks. One, gift horse quips back, swift violence of wet, slow bird in the sand rodent testament. Revisit river rotted secret, return to the wind that learned you, graze the mountain scent, crisp cry of yellow crust to squirm indivisible, to rye individually, to resist dichotomy, to celebrate in love and torment. Plaque dangle, desert deadwood, an audience of canyon, shed new guilt if you can build new forgiveness, if the strength mustered a yoki morning, a birthplace for scorpions, a gnat's nest by the mouthful, allow the shallow fortitudes of arrival, underbrush, ingrown and ongoing, and so on, and so on, and so on. Two, time will remind us of mornings and windows, an exit memorized, the removal of back flesh, a deep swig of backwash, the flies fucking on my thigh. I've got two versions. Milus we're reacting against and people we're fighting for. Every stranger in the desert. The sun of other islands, our feet for mountains. This wind sing different. I will translate at my earliest convenience. The thunder appeased, commence our reunion. This desert, this canyon, three cycles prior. My body 2D flapping. The crows again to greet me, fluent in magenta. Riddled in shadow throw. Three. I am scrambling with flat feet, naked as goddess intended. Unlock your mystery, you read me, you double focus, you double blur, you vibrate and unravel. I am dumbstruck in your river stripe, drip, drip, some sick enamel, a glory spell to end your nightmare. <laughs> One photograph, slant, seated, a portrait. Their silk scarfed head tilted down, anointed by light above, eyes closed as if in prayer. Pale yellow, almost see through glasses rest on their nose. Layered, slant still wears their green vest over a beige shirt, the plaid of their dress peeking under. Behind them, orange and black illustrations swirl on the wall amber in its underexposure. Just above their forehead, perfectly atop their shaved head, a tattoo reads, die for love, punctuated by a claw-like motif at the top of their temple. One photograph, slant again, seated, still, in front of the same swirling wall, almost falling into it. Their body faces the camera with soft ease, Having removed their other layers, a plaid dress is revealed, primarily red, with green and gold accents, boldening and fading as they overlap and intersect. Their hands rest on their lap, left hand holding the wrist of their right, ring on their left index finger. Slant scarf remains, covering their head in grandmotherly fashion, embellished with golden floral ropes, baroque in nature. Shoulders at a slant, right dropped, left raised, with tender demure. 
Mustache etches across their thinking mouth. They gaze downward to the viewer's right, quietly in their own thought world. One photograph. Slant seated. Unruly temporalities. Unruly narrator, I'm just looking to feel small in the right context. In the vast beauty of things, preferably, for all I know is wildness, wilderness, finds me when I'm not looking, beckons when I call, takes over at night, howls till high noon, unfurl into madness and alias by any other name. Alembic antagonist, auspice, antigamy, afroandrogyny, we reek of it in good company. Everybody's here in it. Squealing barometer, kettle black block with misery midnight knowledges, darkness, smog, and flash, an earthen rumble inside the ravenous hive, the gospel of love and protest, let me go off for a minute. The sounds of a world at its beginning, at its onto, transformation by any means. Get in there. Stay in it. Narrative at the level of the line, move the air as it demands. Greeting feedback, grating amaranth, permeating frankincense, sliver linger, smoke in the monolith, the bones of the song begin shaking, latch on into grumbling welcome, sound bitten bother, bother body gather, gather lift pull, tear pull, push roll, organic choreography, mean spirited when I need to be, for the best of us. Queer seraphim, black wing the night, vertiginous in the hard glow flicker, shutter blast blinking in the blistering sun, stunned out of ennui. How lightning breeds thunder, light stems that know you, drain you, that summon the long ago. Gl glances, gazes, gauzes, goozing, shattered glass underfoot. What brings me to you is by definition rebellion together. Our breathing scream, asymmetric sonics, breathes back life into what breathes for us, bleeds us for. Nihilist longevity, all praise daughters of resentment. Our sour tongues thirst for water and we will not stop seeking our satisfaction until we can no longer drink. That would be out of character. Mouth fate aroma, lift up in that other place, link noisy interiority. There is nothing and even there is life. Eyes on you and in you hold and heed onto inner oculus, into ornate orbitals, nonetheless nocturnal masses, notwithstanding, now I know what I know. Ask me where and I'll tell you who. Home is where the people are. I first met poet, vocalist, and sound artist Latasha N. Nevada Diggs in her native Harlem, or home where she's always been, though she's been with me elsewhere. Her book twerk had been in my orbit for some time, teaching me about sound and play. Every poem was a trick up its sleeve. I sought light and light sound me, found me soundful. Latasha has been a mentor, a friend in study in life. I had the honor of collaborating on a portrait with her in her home, where she makes her work, her sound, where she's always been here in Harlem. Adorned in ancestral technicolor, she showed me her postcard collection, swift glances at their secrets, her instruments and artifacts, hats and musical scarves, her growing tropicals a long way from home, but they persist eagerly. This one's at Bayou St. John. Um, I like New Orleans a lot. It's a, it's a place that... has like required... such intentional movement and community. Um, In this picture, there are four people. 
um, Amani, Gabrielle, Valen, and Netta. Outside of the frame, there's Ryan. Ace of Pentacles. It is Butter Sunday. There are only delicious encounters in the frame of the day. Inside the cat's cradle, a star in becoming, cast in glowing hands, entangled in play. Is that me? No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> My computer has a mind of its own. It could have been me. <laughs> an attempt at the world. The waterfall in reverse hidden in forests makes a rushed pause in, in order to reflect air. Two stand in its little pools, facing towards its rushing, rushing towards its fall. Dirty nails. Eat me, infinity serpent, high priestess of sun. The flowers we ate went straight to my hips, rosy red with sweet water, linen draped. I feel so squishy today, maple molten orange rind. I awake when the sun fills my mouth, fills me with too many peaches. My tongue is bumpy, my torso is garden, a maelstrom of thistle kisses. Off to roses and I inhale light. Dirty pupil learns today how mud purifies and an increased sensitivity to nightshades. I lift my head from the train tracks. It is nice to sweat. It reminds me I am open whether or not I like it. The conditions will decide. Willow. Solemn in its breath, many-handed, many-fingered, willow stands skeletal in midwinter solitude, its thin and thinning branches cascading into wild grass, rising like dry fire. Two become near indiscernible in exchange of intermingling. <laughs> 
You cannot tell, but it is early in the morning, windy and raining as it is always. The gray morning cast a spodent over the choir of distant trees, over the wheat yellow grass, over the greening citron of willow, over the sliver of low grass that edges frame. It anchors my wandering, finding me when I am lost and walking long after sun has set, to point me back towards nowhere, to maybe home. I see the willow from many sides of the invented pond, coot and lily laden, walking through the imitation forest, deceptively manicured. I've been here before, insofar as history repeats, as power does not die, but changes shape. But it should just die. Lucy on a September day last summer, several summers ago in shifting sunlight, just before noon, I believe. I imagine these frames were made in a span of 15 minutes. I'm only showing you one, though it may have been more, possibly less. Portraiture as a durational medium is tricky. It can last forever if you allow. I'm tempted to dwell always. We took turns taking pictures of each other with one another's cameras. I think often of Lucy's, Lucy's late grandmother's compass necklace she wears in these. I was transfixed with it then already. Hmm. A large cloud cast over us made everything blue, then went away again. It had rained the night before. The evidence is on the fence. The grass wasn't wet, but it seeped something, soaked us still. I was on my way out. She had just gotten in. Me in relocation, Lou just back from somewhere. The anchors of our relationship is our comings and goings, a commitment to meeting up in the middle, looking at each other closely as we can. We've been making portraits as long as we've known each other. That summer in 2014, catching eyes, wearing some version of the same clothes, something gay, liberal arts, New York City summer, till we soon went out one night making photographs around at, after a Cakes to Kill a performance. Sadly, all my negatives didn't come out. I was borrowing a Hasselblad that night and couldn't get my groove. But the square shapes my rectangle. Rock or sheep, wet mosses, wet mosses, wet mosses, wet mosses. Rock, sheep, mosses, what, wet. Forced poetics exist where a need for expression confronts an inability to achieve expression. Glissant goes on to say, let me be in the force of this drum, the boom of my drum looking, this camera a drum, it does not shoot. The boom of my drum till its natural witness of light, the sound of this light, the sound I saw I'm seeing fills the room. The organic possibility of this medium, light piercing a dark space, inviting a reflected image of the outside world, the very mechanics of our eyes, I need it. The camera is a listening instrument, percussive. What demands presence will appear, regardless of the frame. It is in the cacophony and rogue mathematics of rhythm and secret, informed by community and body that I write. In this light through this drum, can you hear it? Burning bush, she spake. Love views, love you, love views, love you, love views. One. Thank you.